Hey folks, Edge the CEO here, and in this video, we're going to explain all these extra features with the ATEM and exactly what is an upstream keyer and a downstream keyer and how you should use them. So let's go. folks, AJ the CEO here. Just first time stopping by the channel. Thanks for stopping by and on this channel we focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you like what we're doing here, consider becoming a patron or a YouTube member by clicking one of the links down below. So I had a lot of people reach out to me and say, hey AJ, uh, can you explain to me what in the world this upstream keyer and this downstream keyer is? Because I know you talk about it a lot when you're talking about adding scripture and lyrics over top of the screen. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So let's go ahead and reference the images from Blackmagic site to because instead of me trying to create a new image, let's just use theirs to show you exactly what these things are. So what the downstream keyer really is, is think of it in this layer format that you're talking about. So you have your main program that's going out to your stream or whatever that you want to do to record. All right. So, you know, Facebook, YouTube, whatever that you're doing like that. You have your camera. But your downstream is going to layer something over top of your video. So normally your downstream keyers are used for when you're putting a bug or your logo on your image. Um, kind of like what you see here on my YouTube video at the bottom, you see um, where it says AJ to CEO. That's done through YouTube, but that's considered a bug or a logo that I could add on my side if I wanted to. But then you also have um, your lower thirds. That's where you put your name, your information, your scripture, whatever, your lyrics that you have at the bottom of your screen. That's your downstream key where it's actually being layered over top of what you have going um, out to your stream. And then it pushes out. Now, what's the difference between that and your upstream key? Now, your upstream is kind of the equivalent of you want to replace something and do kind of a pass through. That's where your green screens are coming in. That's what they do like in the news where they're meteorologists. They're normally standing on a green screen and then their upstream is they're sending video through to where they're actually going to broadcast that image to replace whatever's going on. So like, for example, if I switch back over here and turn my green screen on, All right, so I have my green screen here, and then say I want to, hey, let's let's bring on the graphic that we just did. So if we switch back over here, and I want to do a upstream like this. So now I would turn on my key, and boom, there you go. Now I have erased the green, and then I am sending my desktop through to where that's what you're able to see. Now, obviously I don't have a green screen on this part. That's why you don't see this. That's why normally I zoom in and I try and stay within the confines of my green screen. So it's easy to do a key or something like that. Now, for example, if we cut back over here to my main overhead, uh, overhead camera and how that works is now when you're using these features, they really don't have any of these options for you to press natively, which kind of stinks. But hey, they're trying to shrink. I mean, I don't I think they have space here or space here or space here for some buttons. I don't know. Maybe that might be in the A10 Mini Pro ISO version 2 Redux overload. I don't know what they're going to call it. <laughs> I'm joking with it. But, you know, this this is your key button and this is the A10 Mini Pro and I'm using the ISO here. So if I happen to hit the key button right here, this is what will turn this feature on. Now, there's no settings for this. This setting is driven by the software. 
So if I cut over here, so you can see my desktop, all of these settings are for my upstream keyer. I am doing a chroma key to get rid of green. I My source with the green screen is my Blackmagic Cinema camera, which is the one right here in front of me. What I want it to do is when I press the upstream key, I want you to erase the color that I picked in here from preview. You know, if you click on here, and this is always confusing to me. It was like, how do you sample this? You click somewhere where the green is in your image. I wish they would just show you a picture of it. That would make it easier. But that's what you do. You're, you're clicking this, and this is where you're clicking in your screen of where the color is. So as you can see, I'm here in this quadrant, and that's where I know that green is. And then you can dial this in that if it's off and things like that. But, you know, that gives me what I'm going to do. And then you can resize this and do other things. This is how I do if I want to do, um, you know, I'm showing DaVinci Resolve or I'm editing and I want to be able to, for you to be able to see through so that I'm not blocking anything that's going on the screen. That's what I would do. So, and all you got to do now is just hit the key button, which also hits, that's what this key core, well, now I'm in the way, um, but that's what this key corresponds to right here. Um, the same thing that's represented right here on the ATEM. So what else can you do with this stuff? So if we come over here and like I said, what I would want to do is I want to, and I can't really slide my, uh, well, I couldn't slide my, green screen over a little bit so let's go ahead and do that all right so i got my green screen as far over as i can eh, that little space but we can we can work with that so now that i got all this done let's cut back over to our desktop and let's look at the software so now that i got this what we want to do is i don't want to take up the whole screen because if i turn this key on as you can see yeah this is better but if i move my arm here you know you're, you're cutting, we're cutting out this whole piece right here. So I don't necessarily want to do that. So what I want to do is come back over to the software and this is all done under the upstream keyer. And I want to shrink this, shrink this <laughs> down. So let's turn this back off, which I'm pressing this button here. And we're going to come over here and resize what we have going on here. All right. So we're going to come over here. And we're going to check on the flying key. This is where we can resize what this, what the black magic or the source is going to be. So I want to change the size and the location. So let's turn this on now and see, because we have shrunk this down to 0.2. So if we turn this on, hey, look, I'm all the way up here. But I don't necessarily want to do that. So let's crank this up a little bit. And I don't have my keyboard in front of me. Let's do it to 0.4. So I like the size, but my head is cut off. So let's drop me down here. And I might have to get my keyboard so I can dial it in exactly. But I think this is going to be good. And now let's move me over. Uh, let's let's stay on this side, but I don't want all of this that you can still see because my green screen does not cover completely behind me. So now what we're going to do is enable this mask setting right here, and we want to chop off some of that stuff over here to my left. So let's increase this just a little bit, and I think I might be doing the wrong side. I think I am. Because when I'm looking at my screen, I'm looking backwards on here. And let's come in here. Let me get my keyboard so I can type in exactly the numbers I want. So let's change this to just five and let's see. Boom. But that's obviously too much. Let's do eight. Ten. Okay. Let's do eleven. All right. So that's good. Now I got to be careful 
Because now my arm's getting cut off, and it's like, oh, no, H.A., your arm. So you got to know to stay within the confines of what your green screen is. So let's change it to 13, 15. Okay, 15 is where we're starting to have some issues here. Let's do 13.5. Still a little bit, so 13.2. 13.1. Uh, 13. All right. 12.8. Uh, almost there. 12.7. There we go. So that looks good. Now I'm looking here on the green screen and I'm looking off of my um, Sony camcorder that actually has better lighting on this right now, where it's automatic, automatically doing the lighting here. So if I came up here and switch that to the camcorder, as you can see, boom, we're going to do this color, but this makes it difficult because of how I have it. So what I'm going to do with this is let's go ahead and turn that off so that we can sample this. We're going to click here and we got to pick where our color is. So. I'm in that area where we have a brighter green. Now let's turn our key on again. All right. So now, as you can see, we've gotten rid of all of this, but I don't like the placement of this. I will want to use this camera angle closer over to the other side. So let's go back down here. And now we have to key out all of this, the rest of my apartment here. So let's go ahead and now let's move our position X and we're going to shift it over this way and to be quite honest what I'd like to do is put a different green screen in but uh, that doesn't really work for me so what I would probably do is this works but I'm going to back myself up here but I don't want you to see all of this so let's move the green screen over here and then do we get the effect that we want alright so that's a lot of it better so now you don't now you see this behind me, but uh, so let's, how can we, so I don't have the space to have a full humongous green screen, but hey, we're playing with examples on how we would use this. So let me move myself back a little bit here. Let me scroll up so y'all can see what I'm doing here. And now we just need to, I'm, I want to mask out a little bit of this here, but I mean, I want to feather that a little bit. So let's go back here to our mask. And now we're coming from the opposite direction. Let's dial that in. So let's do negative 13. Negative 14. No, I'll do negative 13. All right. So this is good. But now, as you can see, the color is a little funky here. So we're going to. Let's play around with these colors just a little bit. So if I went all the way to my foreground, you see that doesn't work. But this does actually help me see that I have a little blind spot there that we need to fix. So let's scoot over just a little bit. Let's actually do, I don't know, 14.8. 14.8. Let's do that. All right, you can't see that. That was the, the placement that I have here. All right, so now let's go back to our colors here and let's try and dial this in. So obviously we're not going to use that foreground because that's too much. All right, almost. And let's bring our background in so we can get rid of that haze. And boom, that looks good. Now, I just don't like the mic coming out of nowhere. And again, I have to be careful on where I'm doing my stuff. But there you go. So that is how I would dial in my um, green screen here. Now, you could, to save time with all the stuff that you did here, if you're always going to do this setup, if I always have my green screen here, which is not ideal for me because my daughter would trip over that, I would trip over that. Um, you could come in here and set those settings to say, I want to set this as, um, I would say B because that's on, um, uh, my right side. So I can do set B 
And then now I can come here to these controls and say, oh, maybe I want to switch to full. And boom, it brings me to here to where I'm taking up everything. And then it's just a button press for me to say, oh, now I'm going to let's cut over to the computer and let's do this, this and this. Now I can press the B key here that y'all can't see this being cut up. And boom, now I move into place here. Really cool. You could do this as a, um, a macro as well, too. Maybe we'll cover that in a later point. But that's how you can dial in your up, down, um, upstream keys. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about the DSK. The DSK is, like I said, is what I normally use for putting lyrics and scripture over top, where with the ATEM, what it does is actually erases a certain color. Um, defaultly, it does black as long as the, I don't wanna to get too technical with it, but whatever image that you're sending, you're sending it as a source, then you're also sending it as what do I want to erase. Now, if you have Photoshop, this can be really, really easy for multiple things. So let me open up Photoshop real quick. And I'm gonna show you, if you have it, how this could save yourself so much time. So let's bring Photoshop over here. All right, so I'm gonna make a new image here and we're gonna do 1080p because that's the layout. And I'm gonna turn this bottom layer off so that I can, it can be transparent because I don't want any color to go through here. That's what makes this really, 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 really easy to do. And I'm going to use the key that we just made. All right. So what we're going to do is now when they talk about lower thirds, what I want you to think about is if you divided up this screen into threes. So you got your top third, then you got your middle third, and then you have your lower third. That's what that is. It just means the lower third of the screen. So what we're gonna do is, let me just pick a color here. I'll use black. Well, no, I don't wanna use black. AJ, you just said that. We'll use red. And I'm gonna fill this real quick. And let's resize it. So something like that. All right, and that's still too big. So let's cut it in half again. Yeah, so something like that. That's what I like. All right, and let's put some text on here. Let's cut AJ, CEO, something like that. Line it up. All right, so this is our lower third. Now I want to turn off this background layer and I'm gonna show you why we do this. So at this point, the image is nothing but this red bar and AJ's CEO and all this checkerboard stuff is just transparent. Let's go ahead and just save this. All right, now if you have Photoshop and you already had it installed, and you have the ATEM software installed, what you could do, and let me see if I can put these side by side so you can see the magic of this happening. Let's go to my media tab here. So if you come up here to file and we're gonna do export, it comes with a plugin that gets installed called the ATEM Switcher Media Pool. Let's click on that. And I need to find my IP address for this. And it is 240. So we're just going to type that in, 240. And boom, it connected. Now, where do I want it to go? See, it says two is empty. Everything is empty. I want this to go to number one. Let's hit one. And after export, I want to set to media player. I'll do that too. 
All right. Let's go ahead and export. Boom. Our stuff got sent over here directly. Awesome. So now let me get rid of my key here. Actually, I can do both of them at the same time. Um, so if we come over here to our source, we're going to go to our downstream keyer. As you can see, our media player and our, excuse me, our source and our key is going to be set to media player. So if we turn that on, boom, there you go. That made it directly for us. Now, you need to be careful if you try to do something like this directly in Canva, because what's happening is um, Photoshop is sending the alpha layer over, which is really saying inside the file, it's saying, this is what I want you to look at. This is what I want you to ignore. In other words, this is what's transparent, what I want you to see through compared to something else. Let me show you the difference of that. Let's cut back over here real quick and let's go back over here to Photoshop. Let's turn that background layer back on. And well, let's just see what happens. Let's keep the screen white and we're going to export this to. Let's do it to position number two. And we'll say this is test two. And let's set everything. All right. So we got all of our stuff set now. Go to media, as you can see. Now let's turn on the DSK. Let's turn on the DSK and see what happens now. You see this background, it's not doing nothing because it's sending everything. And that's why we want to make sure that background is empty. But let's do one more thing. Let's go over here and change our background to black. This is the same thing that I talk about when you're using this with Worship Extreme, ProPresenter, your software, um, if you're using the ATEM, and this is how you can embed this. So let's go ahead and change my color here to black. And do it this way. Now let's export this one more time. Now I always could just save this as a file and, and um, and just drag it over to the software, but I rarely ever use this anyway, so might as well. Let's do this as test three and then export. Now if we bring our software up and let's look at the media player. As you can see, these look the same, but I want you to know this one has no background. This one has a black background. There's the difference. So let's see if we turn this on, what's the effect? You see the difference? Because it's sending the background is black compared to if I come over here to the media player, let's change this to image the first one. And now let's do it. Boom. There's, there's a difference. So you got to be careful with that. I hope you understand that the first image didn't have a background at all. It was transparent. Now, if I sent it again to the other image that actually had a black background, that's the difference. So let me know if you don't understand that, if you want me to explain that more, but technically, so as you can see, by sending this image over now that doesn't have a background, it passes through. All right. So now let me move this over. I'm going to bring up Worship Extreme. And as you can see, and let me turn my display off so you can actually see what I'm doing. All right. So here we go. So we have Worship Extreme here, and this is what I talk about from, this was the tutorial when we did our lower third, so I can get rid of that. That's why when you see this, if we go to edit this, we're not sending a background. That's how this works. So when you're, whatever software that you're using, if you're doing scripture and you want to do the downstream keyer, as in lay scripture and lyrics over top, 
of your stuff, whether this is OBS, but we're talking about the ATEM, um, you want to send nothing. Because if we come in here and I want to say I want to send, uh, I don't think I have a solid color. Yeah, dude. I send it like this. All right. So let me move this off screen. We're going to start that screen up, which is image number two. We're going to launch this. So you see this. That's what's going on. All right. So back to our ATEM software. We're going to switch back to camera number one right here. We're going to turn on the DSK. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even tell you all this. Let's cut back over here real quick. We got to switch our source from the media player to our computer as well as our source. All right. That's what I had to do. All right. So now I'm back here. We're going to turn on the DSK the same way. That's why you're seeing this green through here because it doesn't work <laughs> that way. All I'm going to do now is come into Easy Worship. Let's get rid of that background to where it's sending nothing transparent. Let's bring it back over. Let's relaunch it again. And as you can see, now there is no background. Let's cut back over to me. Let's turn the DSK on. And that's how now you can see this because that whole background is transparent. It's sending transparency here. Don't send anything. The only thing it's sending is this text. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, and that I really wasn't even intending to go that in depth with it, but hopefully that makes sense. I have timestamps so you can jump over to whichever one that you need to, but that's it. Let me know if you have any other questions, but that's how you can do your, that's hopefully that explains what the upstream keyer is and the downstream keyer and which one and which situation you use each. So if you like this type of content, I appreciate a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. I want to thank the patrons and the YouTube members for making this video possible. And you too can become a patron for as little as $1 a month. Or you can click the join button below and become a YouTube member. No matter which way you pick, folks, you are helping us train media ministries all over the world. Thanks for watching, folks. This is AJ, and we will see you on the next video. Later.